What up, three times? What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? Welcome to the Wake and Bake Show. Your interactive daily Philly sports vocabulary motivational philosophy gaming show. And I am a fancy clown. How are you? Seems like anybody, uh, seems like nobody's really here yet. Fix the camera there. So let me get this song popping off. Life feels like a nightmare. Lately, nigga, seven days a week, I think I cry myself to sleep. And these white people let work. Ain't trying to pay a nigga every time I finish work. Don't you try to pay a nigga out? I've been staying in the house like I'm a punishment. Even what up, King of Kings? What up, Planet? Happy Wednesday, my guys. Get your coffees ready. I'm missing this woman and don't worry that she struggled with the worry that this work would be the way that motherfuckers get. But she will not call me back, so she on some other shit. Clearly do not need my help. Fuck her over twice as good. Those times she needed me most, I will repeat the ghost. Then pop back up later and make it seem like she was the ghost. I should have put another hook on there. I like that hook a lot. Let me run that back. Life is like a nightmare. Lately, nigga. Seven days a week, I think I'm crying myself to sleep. And these white people let work. Ain't trying to pay a nigga every time I finish work. Don't you try to pay a nigga out. Anyway, what's up, y'all, man? Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Excuse me. So, yeah, like I said, get your coffees ready. I got my coffee. I got my water. I might have to drink that joint pretty soon. What up, Azor? Flex on him. Flex on him. So, yo. All right, so I played that song. That song's super fitting. Uh, it's Thursday. I spent the last two days looking for a job. I actually spent the last two weeks looking for a job, but I was like inactively doing it, but then like actively back doing it. So I kind of have been spending the last two days doing that. And uh, I also was mad sad on Monday because y'all know Philly sports. This shit's crazy. Anyway, yeah, I was super sad, bro. On Monday, I got sick. I got, I had family issues. I had, I had to exercise my no. Y'all remember on Monday, we was talking about the importance of saying no. I was forced into a position where I had to absolutely exercise my no and I passed. I did a damn good job at that stuff. So encourage me. Um, yeah, the snakes, the snakes going win. Yeah, word, that's just life. Uh, appreciate you, Tom. I don't give a fuck what your opinions are on baseball, bro. It's like, no, but look though, for real, for real. That shit was bothersome. So, nigga had to take a nap. And, uh, really get back into remembering why I even started watching sports in the first place. I started watching the, uh, sports in the first place to relate with people. I was telling my boy Azor about this yesterday. I started watching sports in the first place to relate with people. And I have different subjects for small talk. And also, a lot of my friends were engaged in the sports. And I wanted to be able to get closer to my friends again after a long time so that's pretty much what i use sports for but then you know i leaned all the way in and then i let these balls break my heart it's cool it happens um but i will say this thank god that is just a game baby because i had some real life stuff happening on monday and that stuff really kind of overtook what was going on i was sad about the sports thing but what i was really sad about was family was trying to play me out man they was trying to make me they was trying to make me they bitch, man. They was trying to make me do stuff that I wasn't really down with doing. So I had to look at all the people that I loved all at once and be like, no, 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 no. Go figure something out. I'm, I'm sorry. I ain't. It's not my problem. No. So it was crazy because if any of y'all know me personally, that did not come easily. But anyway, with that said, I'm only just explaining. I wrote this song in like, I wrote this song last summer. So the summer of 2020. Hell no. No, this song is way older than that. This song is from like 2018 now that I think about it. So nah, 
I thought I was talking about some different stuff. I guess that's how life be. But anyway, this song was about a job that I hated that I had. And now I'm looking for another job. And I'm like reading all these descriptions of jobs. And they all are jobs. You know what I'm saying? So I got to compromise. And I got to decide like, oh, how much do I value myself? What am I willing to do? And all of that stuff. So that's been playing on me. And then also the other subject matter, which is, you know, I just had a sad couple of days with the family stuff, with the looking for a job stuff. And the, and, the, and the, I was about to say the World Series. We ain't even make it that far. But anyway, I wasn't even going to... Uh, I, I Let's just get into the word, man. Let's just get into the word. Because I could sit here and talk forever, bro. I could sit here and talk forever. So, the word... What up? Oh, my God. Rokezilla in the building. What up, my guy? Good to see you, bud. Sheesh. Welcome to the show, man. Welcome to the show. This is a weird episode. I'm just going to warn you. This is a weird episode. So, anyway, let's talk about the Riz, man. Let's talk about the Riz, the word of the day. So, uh, somebody was arguing with me recently saying that uh, Riz, Riz is like something bad. And I was thinking like, nah, it ain't bad. And then I had to tell him like, nah, what it really is, is it's charisma. And if charisma scares you, then you should, you should probably get your shit together. So, charisma, look at this definition. It's so fun. Synonyms. No, no, not synonyms. I'm sorry. Parts of speech. Noun. Charisma is a noun. It's a person, place, or thing. It's something you can possess, right? Um, and look at this description. A personal magic of leadership arousing special popular loyalty or enthusiasm for a public figure. You see that? A personal magic of leadership arousing special popular loyalty or enthusiasm for a public figure. Then the second one says, a special magnetic charm, right? Hey, man. Hey, but if you look at it, C-H-A-R, that charisma and that charm, they both got the same root, that char, whatever that is. I don't know enough about words, but that root, that root matters. Let's see. The Greek word charisma means favor or gift. Sorry, I was just reconciling that with the little bit of knowledge of Greek that I do have. Uh, it comes from the verb charistatai, to favor, which in turn comes from the noun charis, meaning grace. Okay, I'm seeing it. In English, charisma was originally used in Christian context to refer to a gift or power bestowed upon an individual by the Holy Spirit for the good of the church, a sense that is now very rare. No shit. Uh, these days, we use the word to refer to social rather than divine grace. For instance, a leader with charisma may easily gain popular support, and a job applicant with charisma may shine in an interview. Look at, look at them wrapping it all up, making it relative to my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, on that charisma, just in case anybody was wondering how it's pronounced, say it for me, baby. Charisma. There you go. So... I don't know how really to bring it up, but half of the reason I'm here is because I heard a bunch of people died last night. And um, I've been telling y'all, like, I be looking for subject matter to talk about on this, John. And most of the time, what ends up happening is I end up scrolling through Twitter and seeing um, massive amounts of violence and then also seeing really funny things. And then so, you know, I just try to share them, John's. But this was huge. I don't know what happened. This morning, I've been actually struggling to find somebody who was going to... I've been struggling to find a news outlet that was going to just give me like the straight up story because it's still a manhunt. So there's so much live coverage when I search for it. So a lot of people are still going on and on. There's actually going to be a press conference at 1030. I'm not going to tune into that. But um, yeah, so I, I was and then a lot of people are wrapping it up with the war and, and uh, you know, Gaza and stuff. So I guess this is hopefully one of the best things that I'm going to find that's going to tell us what's going on right now. Continuing to follow developing news out of Lewiston, Maine, where at least 16 people are dead this morning after a mass shooting. The victims were at a restaurant and a bowling alley when they were gunned down. Several sources say more than 50 people were hurt. There have been no Yo, that's so wisdom. far, but police Planet, that's have wisdom. named a person of interest. That. Robert Card, My 40 years empty, old, man. who is considered armed and dangerous. Here is the alleged gunman captured on surveillance footage as he entered the bowling alley. I don't know why we I read that, that name as report card. There you go. 
Um, our Elaine Keanu is in Lewiston, where people are being told to shelter in place. Have y'all seen any of this? Are they talking about this on uh, local Good news and stuff? Good morning to you, Anne-Marie. And it's not just residents of Lewiston who are being ordered to shelter in place. It's people in the entire surrounding county. Now, as a precaution, multiple schools and businesses have been closed today as well. And residents are being told to clear the streets as hundreds of police officers work around the clock to track down that person of interest. We have an active shooter. We have multiple injuries. Shortly before 7 p.m., bystanders, young and old, fled for their lives Wednesday night after a gunman opened fire at a bowling alley in Lewis. See, the thing about Maine, though, that's different than where we live at, is we are in a, like, specifically, like, pretty urban and suburban area. Maine ain't urban. I bet you mo most of y'all can't name one city in Maine. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Maine is massively rural. Lewiston. We had time recreation for an active shooter incident, multiple people down. After reports of the shooting, police released these photos of a man walking into the bowling alley and pointing an AR-style weapon. It's normal night of bowling, and out of nowhere, he just came in, and there was a loud pop. That was a balloon. This witness says he was inside the bowling alley for just 10 minutes when shots rang out. He said he heard a loud pop, and he thought it was a bowling, and then they cut him off. Imagine being in a bowling alley, you hear a loud pop. You know, you're just going to think it's a ball dropping, bro. You probably won't even panic or, or, or even become alert or urgent or take some type of action. You probably just be like, pop. Keep it moving. You know, before you actually do something. Now. I just booked it um, down the lane and I slid basically into where the... Yo, Planet, is the Citizens app a local thing or is that like, do you set your parameters? Is it based on like zip codes and cities or is it like they just tell you about everything? based on like uh, popularity, I would say. Pins are and climbed up in the machine and was on top of the machines for about 10 minutes until the cops got there. Police also released this image of the person of interest's vehicle in a parking lot. Its driver's side door left open, which police later recovered nearly 10 miles away in Lisbon. We have a second one, second active shooter, Schwangis. Police said they responded to a second location at a bar and restaurant less than four miles away and then released this image of 40-year-old Robert Card as a person of interest in the pair of shootings. Have PD on scene, but the suspect is still at large. According to a Maine law enforcement bulletin seen by CBS News, Card is a trained firearms instructor believed to be in the Army Reserve based out of the city of Saco, Maine. He recently reported mental health issues and threatened to shoot up the Yo, National funny, Guard base Kings. there. He was committed to a facility for two weeks over the summer. We have uh, literally hundreds of police officers working around the state of Maine uh, to Planet investigate this case. Maine to locate Mr. Card. We'll continue to gather information so that we can bring uh, the suspect to justice. As the search for Card continues, dozens of victims flowed into the local hospital system, which could quickly become overwhelmed. I've heard people that the down there by the doors that have Sorry. family members in there. There was a girl down there with five people all got shot up. What am I looking at? And they're like frantic while others gathered at a nearby middle school in Auburn, hoping to reunite with loved ones who were caught in the Sorry. shootings. This is a happier place right now in the entire area where people, you know, witnesses have saw traumatic events are coming together with their family and loved ones who were worried to death about them, and they're coming together, so it is happy. But on the Yeah, homie popped up with a Wendy's wig. The flip side of the happiness, what you're seeing is you're seeing the, the turmoil and the trauma that they're going through, especially the witnesses. Now we are still awaiting additional details. And See, that's funny wording because the witnesses are victims. They might not have got hit, but they, they're victims of an attack. Anne-Marie, we hope to learn more at a news conference later this morning. Um, so I don't know how much you can sort of tell us, though. I see the road blocked off uh, behind you. I know that people are being told to shelter in place, but clearly everyone can't do that. I mean, people got to get to work. People have things to do. Uh, what is the latest that you can share with us on sort of the search for the shooter and how police may be conducting this? 
Yeah, so it, it's a bit tough right now. We just arrived on the scene, frankly, not that long ago. Um, we have seen some cars going by despite that shelter in place order. But what I can tell you is that a short time ago, we heard some helicopters overhead. It is hard to know precisely which agency uh, those helicopters may have belonged to or if they were news choppers, frankly, Anne-Marie, we don't know. Um, but from watching some of the local reports on the way in here, uh, there are definitely, there's a, a definite sense of a, um, a heightened state of alert, I would say. Uh, some of the residents have talked about this being the kind of place where you can leave your doors unlocked. Certainly not the situation now. Um, the residents here are very much on edge, as you can imagine, uh, as that search for that person of interest continues. Um, you know, when we were talking to Bradley Blackburn earlier, he basically said that the entire state of Maine only, you know, has a handful of, of sort of homicides. So this must be really out of the ordinary for this small community. They just like doubled the crime numbers in like one day. Um, anyway, I showed y'all that, man. I ain't trying to be fear mongering. I'll be telling you, like, I, I, I personally try to not necessarily have things on my radar that I can't help or can't do anything about. But honestly, I'm going to be for real. I'm going to be 100% for real with y'all. I could pray, right? I could let y'all know. Y'all could pray. Um, y'all could, I guess, like, uh, probably try to spread some. If y'all ain't praying people, y'all could try to spread some good energy out into the universe. You know what I'm saying? You could do that. You could possibly recognize the reverberant. Uh, is that a word? The, re the reverberation. That's possible to happen from people waking up and looking at this all day and dealing with it. Maybe take some donuts to work or something. Maybe cop some coffees at lunch for the homies or something. Just because, I don't know, man. It's like when bad things happen, it's real cool when people do good things, try to weigh it out. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we can't bring 20-something 20, 20 lives back, but we could go out and do something. We can make some effort. No Jesus, no peace. Why am I funny? Why am I funny? So, yeah, like, uh, cause I mean, ultimately I was like, I, I, I was like actually second guessing, like, should I try to make people aware or should I leave it as it is? I don't know. It was crazy, but it definitely, um, made me feel who that. New Hampshire. Hello. Hello. What's up? Yeah, I hear you. What's up? I'm not supposed to hear him. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, I was like second guessing whether I wanted to share it or whether or not, but it actually was mainly the reason that I was, uh, I jumped this joint on this joint because, I mean, basically, I was gone for the last two days because I was like, yeah, man, I think I might have to end the show. And I don't know how. I don't know how to say goodbye. And that was my issue. So I was trying to come up with something for Tuesday. But then Monday night happened. And then I got busy. I was kicking it with the homie. And then uh, the Phillies lost. So I ended up being like up all night, even though I didn't want to be up all night. So didn't come up with nothing. But here I am on Thursday. Some motherfuckers got shot, and it's sad. It's crazy. I know uh, King of Kings, the type of crazy nigga to be like, that shit ain't even real, <laughs> right? But I'm pretty much more of the attitude where awareness is the, at least I can agree that awareness is everything, right? We can't say, we could shut our eyes to it or we could stick our hand in the, uh, our head in the sand or no shit like that. So like, even though I would love to protect my peace, I got to recognize I'm dealing in a world that's not peaceful. You know what I'm saying? We moving out here. So we got to be aware. We got to be safe. Uh, my man sent me something that was funny. And I'm going to just say this. It's kind of relevant. Uh, this, if I was to be honest with you, most of my conservative friends, and I'm not trying to make fun of you, King of Kings. I apologize. I will say this is me being serious now. That was a joke. Um, most of the conservatives I, I, I know, most of the real conservatives I know, they don't, they see something like this and they think, man, this is just going to be another attack on gun rights. This is just another way for the government to come and say, dag, we shouldn't have or be allowed to have automatic weapons. And that's an angle that a lot of conservatives are going to see this and take. 
Now, the loss of life, that's hurtful. The fact that these types of things can happen so fast and in such like open and supposedly safe places, you know, that's, that's also think, something to think about, you know, next time you go bowling. But a lot of conservatives are literally going to think, damn, now they're going to try to take my AR, right? I'm serious. I know these people. So my man sent me a meme that was like, uh, oh, man, can I share it? Where is it at? Is it on my phone? Damn, I don't know how I could get to it. But basically, it was like a, a, a woman posted, when I, when I meet a guy who says he has a gun, I'm like, oh, come on, kitty. Come on, kitty. When I meet a guy who says he has a gun, I'm like, what? Don't you have a dick or something like that? Or what's your dick small or something? Something like that. And then the dude responded, he was like, yeah, I do have a dick. But the last time somebody broke into my house, I tried to use my dick, and it didn't work out right. I actually got me in more trouble than getting me out of trouble. Should have just used a gun. Right? So, it was a funny meme. But I say that. I say it's a lot of gravity around this, and it's all political strife, and it's a whole bunch of beef going on here and overseas. So, it's just crazy how it's going to be turned into a whole lot of politics at the end of the day so with that said let's move on let's go on to something i found inspiring look at this right here this was crazy this was unbelievable this young boy meet america's top young scientist 14 year old who invented soap that treats skin cancer young boy named he-man he-man bikel ninth grader from the annandale virginia won a prestigious award from 3m discovery education Consider one of the country's top middle school science competitions. I believe that young minds can make a positive impact on the world, he man said in his submission for the award. I have always been interested in biology and technology, and this challenge gave me the perfect platform to showcase my ideas. This boy, that's crazy. He focused. He man spent the past four months competing against other competing against nine other finalists to be named America's top young scientists. The competition was created to help students between the 5th and 8th grades to create an innovative idea that, that to change the world. That's what it says. In addition to the prestigious title, young scientists who win in the award get a 25000 cash prize. He-Man won this year's grand prize at 3M headquarters in St. Paul, Minnesota. Yo, so I saw a young boy talking, and I was like, wait a minute, this boy is different. He was like, he was selling that John too. He was explaining like, yeah, man, found out that skin cancer was a problem in the world. And I was like, can't have that. So he was just like, I need to fix that. And I thought that was just crazy. They gonna, they gonna let My him name talk. is Inbeck Elep. And when I found out about the inequitable price of skin cancer treatment globally, I knew I had to take action. I'm telling you, I could go to Young Boss TED Talks. This compound-based bar of soap is charged with cancer-fighting chemicals to help fight the disease. And the best part, it's affordable and accessible to all. All right, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you, young boy talking. So the fact is, it's crazy because genius is genius. Like, the young boy is a good inventor. That's one thing. I know a lot of people who are good at science, but they're not really great at public speaking. You know what I mean? They're not salesmen. Yeah, he a hustler, bro. He a hustler. And he got an accent, so he ain't really from no Annandale, Virginia. You could tell that boy was a Virginia bred. That boy, uh, he probably homeschooled from some uh, first-generation Americans. You know what I'm saying? Peep the name. Um, but yeah, still. Still can't take none away from it. It's inspiring. Uh, it's 14-year-olds out here changing the world, trying to cure skin cancer. I thought that was crazy. I thought that was so crazy. Um, and apparently we're going to war with China. I thought this was crazy, too. Uh, the Navy, apparently, because, first off, the Navy uses Chinese dudes to do their laundry. Been doing it since, like, forever. It's been a thing. I don't know if y'all knew that, but it's been a thing. But they can't do it no more because they think they're going to spy. So I thought that was crazy because I was like, yo, we've been doing that through every war throughout all of history, pretty much, America. We've been using Chinese bulls to clean our laundry. That's just what it is. That's what it's always been. But apparently, within the last three days, we can't do it no more because we got some issues with China going on. Apparently, I think it was the Philippines. China's threatening the Philippines, and we got to go defend the Philippines, Biden said. I don't know, man. These foreign policy situations are really not my milieu. But it just keep popping up on the timelines. 
So when I look for local news and I look for um regular stuff, this stuff just be it's pervading everything for the last like week. And I will say the week before that, they was talking about like nice distractions and cool nonsense and you know the type of stuff like this. The fourteen year old who made the soap. You know what I'm saying? I'll be loving stuff like that. I love to read articles like that. Um let's see. Uh oh yeah. So we did not finish our prison industrial complex series. We did number one. We did number two. I think today we are on number three, which is the bail industry. Uh, let me sum that back up for y'all. Basically, the prison industrial complex is something I'm trying to explain, which is very hard to explain because it's a whole lot of stuff in conjunction with one another. But what happens is people make money from prisons. It's just that simple. And I was trying to prove that they want the black man put down, as you can see through all of these things, Will Smith, whatever, what have you. And I was also saying that you could call it what you want. You could say it's the Illuminati. You could say it's the devil. You could say it's just these big companies. You could say it's racism. You could say it's the system, right? But I must just say, let's put a face on it. Let's actually look up these corporations who benefit from black people, not just black people, but people being in prison. So that is the prison industrial complex. It's an industry. People make money from it. So today we'll talk about bail. Oh, this video's private. Now I gotta go searching. That's just, just man. All right, let's see. Let's find a video on bail. Bail. Industry. ACLU sold me short. Corruption. But let's see how our keywords work. Hopefully, this should get me the results I want. Videos. 14 minutes? No. 11 minutes. Locked up for being poor. How America's bail system is rigged against the poor. Okay, that seems like it's covering what we want to cover. Hyundai Tucson versus Honda CR. You know me, nah, you good, bro. It's more than that. Was he charming to you? The young boy, he was questionable to me. He was suspect. But the fact that he had uh, two different opposing skills like that, like sometimes people are not good at both things that way. So it's impressive when people are like good at talking and inventing things. You know what I'm saying? It's about literal generations of poverty being attacked because people cannot afford their freedom. Almost half a million people are sitting in a jail cell tonight and they haven't been found guilty of any crime. Here, people are actually being held solely because they cannot afford to pay. That's the only reason. This is cash bail. $500, $1,000, $5,000. In communities where families are one check away from devastation, bail is devastation. In this three-part series from AJ+, Plus, we'll look at how bail rips families apart. I'm just a regular mom, and they threw me into jail like I was a hardened criminal. How the for-profit bail industry breeds distrust. These people are lost children. They are going to hide. They're going to run. And the disruptors who are reimagining what public safety should look like. Simply having money does not make you a better human being. It's just purely a wealth-based detention scheme, full stop. There is a war on black people, and in order for us to love each other well, we have to fight for our freedom. God damn, how long is this? In America, we shouldn't have to buy our freedom, but that's exactly what Bill forces us to do. It's too much, man, I just want info. Okay, picture this. You're driving down the street. You make an illegal U-turn. A cop pulls up your record. You've got a warrant for not paying some speeding tickets. You get booked. A judge uses Why what's called a bail warrant. schedule to set a predetermined amount of $500 based on the alleged crime. If you can post it, you walk out. If not, you sit in jail until trial. That's bail, paying money to the court so you can secure your release from jail while you wait for your trial. But what if you can't afford it? Take a look. Most of the people in jail right now across the U.S. haven't been found guilty of any crime. 
In the eyes of the law, they're innocent. That's almost half a million people just waiting in what's called pre-trial detention. That's more people than some countries have in their jails and prisons combined. My name is Montega Simmons, and I am Damn. a bail reform activist. So 75% of people in jail are people just waiting for trial? Because they can't pay to get out. It's kind of backwards. First you get punished, and then at the end of your jail time, they figure out if you actually did it. Bail has been sold to us as like the solution, but it's not, it's, it's the problem. It's what's keeping our jails so swollen. This is Mary Moreno. She's an organizer in Houston, Texas, who helps bail people out of jail who can't afford it. Money shouldn't be the deciding factor whether you're in jail or not. They say, how can you not have $500? But a lot of people don't have $500, right? The American justice system is actually rigged to favor What you mean, rich. King of Kings? And Tesla was weird. can mean different things to different people. 40% of Americans can't afford to come up with $400 in an emergency. Jory ain't getting money so from prison. So imagine you're this woman you who had to come up with 2000 Your grandmother in Texas. I think this, I think this call of these types of teams a war is a misuse of the word. Simply oppression. Yeah, exactly. You're babysitting your grandson. He runs out into the street. Nothing bad happens, but a driver calls the cops. You get booked. Your bail is set at $2,000. what? You can't afford that. So you sit in jail for two Wait, weeks what? until a community group advocates for your release. They say, how can you not have $500? But a lot of people don't have $500, right? The American justice system is actually Shoot. rigged to favor the rich. And being rich can mean different things to different people. 40% of Americans can't afford to come up with $400 in an emergency. So imagine you're this woman. 40%. Who had to come up with 2000 Yo, I used to lend people money. I know that to be a fact. That's true. Your grandmother in Texas. You're babysitting your grandson. He runs out into the street. Nothing bad happens, but a driver calls the cops. You get booked. Your bail is set at $2,000. You can't afford that. So you sit in jail for two weeks until a community group advocates for your release. It wasn't anything, bus. right? Children run into the street all the time. This police officer, when he arrived, he sees a criminal. And he's like, I'm gonna take you to jail. Instead of like, how can I help you? Black and brown folks are policed both more harshly and more frequently than their white counterparts. And the system just builds from there. Blake Strode represents people who are targeted and Absolutely criminalized by the system. Absolutely modern slavery. Once you've labeled someone as a criminal, they're sort of in a subhuman category. <laughs> the first one was dumb and the second one was me. That commercial was extra. Shows like Law and Order, they're popular because they feed into this notion that we already believe about good and bad. You've never seen an episode that focused on the ways in which implicit bias determines who's getting policed in the first place. You'll never see an episode that talks about rampant use of force in, in a poor black community. Disparities in sentencing and charging. You also never see the cost in people's lives. Here's what he means. You're a mom of seven kids. You're accused of stealing two beers. You get booked. A judge sets bail at $15,000. You can't pay, so you spend nine months in jail. You lose your job, you miss your grandmother's funeral, and you get separated from your kids. People who cannot afford bail experience these catastrophic setbacks that are just incredibly hard to come out of. That's Z Gorley. They lead media efforts at a law firm in St. Louis, Missouri. Today. The central theme I hear from people impacted by cash bail is loss. Loss of time with their children, with their brothers and sisters, with their parents. You have this system that is operating in all elements of a person's life in a systemically racist way, from the use of force at that initial arrest, the charges, the sentencing, and then the conditions that people are held in. So let's break that down. Statistically, black and brown people are more likely to be arrested, 
more likely to get assigned bail and less likely to be able to afford it. And the amount they have to pay can be totally unrealistic. The median bail for a felony is $10,000. The median annual income for someone who's arrested is $19,000. Bail has absolutely nothing to do with the thing we're taught in like grade school, which is that you're innocent until proven guilty. It's just purely a wealth-based detention scheme, full stop. And people will say, oh, they were only there for wealth, a few weeks. Wealth-based detention scheme. Wealth-based detention scheme. Or few days. St. Louis is an interesting location for that, or that's where they filmed the first 48 show. Dang. I mean, where there's supply, or sorry, yeah, where there's supply, there's demand, right? Where there's a need, you gotta in fill fact, it. In fact, spending just three days in jail can that's actually crazy. start to change. A show to find evidence. Okay, yeah, exactly, as fast as possible. And make it entertaining so these balls is like psh, that's probably the first place we need to go the legal outcome of cases you can't help collect evidence you can't meet with your attorney as often as you may want to or may need to pretrial detention can lead people to plead guilty to a crime they didn't commit meet judge daryl jordan of harris county texas he's helping to reform the bail system there it's a plea bargain system instead of a criminal justice system Remember, the vast majority of cases in the U.S. never make it to trial. You see, prosecutors know that people just want to go home. When you have to make a decision, do I not want plead this case need. and go home or stay here and fight it and risk losing everything that I have, uh, most people are not take the to to. In a perfect world, kids you get, get arrested to. and tried on the same day. But in reality, left, it can take so much on. longer than that. So bondsmen like J.L. McIntyre offer you another way out. The purpose of bond industry is to make money. Here's this how it works. We get a call. Am I wrong for not trusting him immediately? I'm sorry. Forgive me. Your son was booked. The judge sets bail at $100,000. You sign a contract guaranteeing he'll show up in court. Your bond fee is $10,000. It could be more. It could be less. We get him out of jail. He a bondsman. We refer to ourselves as the grease that keeps the wheels of the criminal justice system moving. Ken Good is an attorney for the Texas bail bonds industry. These people are lost children. For they real, need for real. somebody there to hold their hand he and explain to them this is the process. He think he walked this Texas is Ranger. what we need to do to Look get you watch. back on track. We will come and get you. We'll take you to the court. And yes, there's a ton of babysitting involved, but that's what we do. That's what we've been doing for 200 years. So the for-profit bail industry is built on this really shaky, disproven myth that people won't come back to court unless they have money to lose. But policy changes have shown that people do come back. Take Washington, D.C., for example. The district got rid of cash bail in 1992. Since then, they've had a 90% response rate for people who are let go. People want to go back to their lives. They want to be with their families and friends their church, their community. It's not like they have, you know, endless amount of resources to just up and move and start a whole new life. I think that there are people who really believe that the whole problem is we have poor people and they should not be held accountable because they're poor. You know, I was raised in a very small town. We were poor and we were <laughs> They keep saying poor, but they only show in black people, yo. Yeah. Overcome. There's I think it was like one group of Puerto Ricans or something. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Ain't society. been no for, I ain't even seen that no poor white folks on this joint yet. They just They just need to get their life together. But what no one is talking about is this overarching oppressive system. Round them up. Let's break that cycle. Let's help affluent. people. So instead of like investing in incarceration, definitely. DC in is more affluent, but it's, it shouldn't be more affluent than here. And get this. I was just thinking when I when I heard that, I was just thinking, okay, so get locked up in DC. All right, bet. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. Letting people go is actually so much cheaper than keeping them locked up. Right now, taxpayers in Harris County, Texas spend $87 every day for each inmate behind bars. But to release them with services and reminders about showing back up to court, that costs just 83 cents a day. Instead, we want to criminalize them, lock them up and throw away the key. 
And so jail populations just keep growing. Between 1999 and 2014, the number of people held in jail before trial accounted for 99% of the total growth. Which begs the question, what if the bail system is doing more harm than good? Or worse, what if it's just broken? The bail system is functioning just as it was always intended to. You can peel back the pages of history, going back to slavery, what happened after Civil War, and Black Codes, and Jim Crow. Now we are in the new Jim Crow. As America continues this struggle for civil rights and for human rights and the movement for black lives, it's almost like with every push forward, there is a socially conservative push backwards. What are all those waves accomplishing? They are accomplishing the engineering of black invisibility. Black invisibility. Being engineered, I'm gonna just go ahead and end that. That's how I feel about Will Smith. Will, Will Smith is black and visibility being engineered before our eyes. That was, they said it right. They said it how I would say it. Um, all right, so anyway, as some of y'all know, I got locked up one time, right? So I was smoking weed and uh, I was walking down the street and this homie was like, you trying to buy a t-shirt? Cause I was going to this concert. I was going to go meet the homies at this concert, right? And it was the day that we got decriminalized in the city that I live in. So I was like, nah, I don't want no t-shirt. He was like, you selling weed? I was like, nah, but you can hit this joint. Pause. So let him hit my weed. Cops came from around the corner, locked us both up. I went to jail overnight. Um, they didn't let me make a phone call. As soon as I got released the next morning, I pretty much had to plead guilty to everything to get released. As they said, I wasn't given my ID back. I wasn't able to get my phone call even once I got released. Uh, when I saw the judge, I wasn't allowed to say shit. Um, and then I went and immediately had to borrow money from my girl and my homie at the time because I had to pay for the, uh, well, the release. I didn't have to post bail or whatever. I was fortunate enough to get released. But because I pled guilty to everything, because I didn't want to sit there and fight it, because I had a job to get back to. That's how I looked at it. I was like, how much is fine? Okay, cool. I'll agree to that. So I agreed to the fine. They let me do a program or whatever. I got out the easy way. But long story short, I did 32 hours community service, which is like four eight-hour shifts, which takes money out of my pocket. Um, I ended up having to pay a lawyer like two Rizzies and I had to pay two Rizzies and fines and all of that so I could keep my job. And so I didn't have to stay in jail for longer than the 10 or 12 hours that I had to stay in jail. And it was because I was smoking weed in the county and not the city. So that's my story. There you go. That's my personal uh, uh, take on the matter because I didn't have to pay bail. But the reason I ain't paid bail is because I sat there and I straight up pled guilty because that's what I was advised to do. So. Yep, new Jim Crow. Yeah, but there's less needs for bondsmen if people can afford bail. Not to mention, there's local law as that differ state to state. DC has no real need to abuse the type of system, if I understand correctly. Yeah, I mean, no one has any need to abuse anything, right? Who needs to abuse things, right? But, I mean, I think if we looking at this like more on a national level than more like DC is just, I don't even know what that is. What is that? A province or something? It's a, it's a district, right? It's not a state. It's not a city, but maybe it is a city. I don't know. But DC is like, that's like a small thing, but like looking at it more like just the, the countrywide situation is we all pretty much are subject to the same system. And the system is basically people get locked up. They can't afford to pay. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, I couldn't afford to pay. The only reason that I got off, what, what I got off with was because somebody else was generous enough to foot the bill for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if I didn't have those people who was generous enough to foot those bills for me, I wouldn't have got a lawyer. And I wouldn't have been able to go through the program the way that I did the program. I would have just got a public defendant who would have had me on some old other stuff. Got to be careful sometimes. You know, you can't play with your freedom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. But I... I guess I was just saying, um,
I guess I was just saying that even if DC is slightly progressive in the matter, like, you know, sucks because, like, we not. Like, you would think that we're a progressive city too, right? But I don't know. It ain't seem that way when I was in that, John. Um, but, yeah, that's the, that's, the, that's the prison industrial complex. That's just one more layer of it. Um, but, yeah, like I said, man, uh, I got to start looking for a gig, a giggity giggity. I've been soft on that, John, for like two weeks. Now I got to hard do it. Now I got to hit it hard. I got to start grinding on it, grinding with it. These is all pause worthy. I understand. So I, um, I'm probably not going to be able to be on this, John, every day. And that saddens me. This is the 49th episode, which is a special number. Uh, but I don't know. I appreciate y'all for showing up and supporting and stuff. And I'm going to find something. If I do get back on this, John, it might be maybe a different time slot or maybe it won't be as consistent. I don't know. I don't know, man. I struggled to find a format over 49 episodes. But we're here. Y'all been kicking it. So I appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I paused myself, didn't I? I oh, you probably got me first, though, pause. Um, all right. Yeah, so I looked up I looked up Herodotus. Why did I look up Herodotus? I don't know. Name popped in my head. Um, that was it. First, the first name I thought of was Alexander the Great, and then I was like, "Is there anybody from that time that's not like a Stoic that I could think of?" But yeah, there you go. He probably ain't from that time, and he probably is a Stoic. Who the hell knows? Bill, death is a delightful hiding place for a weary man. I think that's some weird shit to say. In soft regions are born soft men. Ooh, that's hard. Pause. That's hard. He is the best man who, when making his plans, fears and reflects on everything that can happen to him. But in the moment of action, he is bold. There you go. It's called prep. Hey, look at this one. Some men give up their designs when they have almost reached the goal, while others, on the contrary, obtain a victory by exerting, at the last moment, more vigorous efforts than ever before. I like that. It ain't brief, but it's strong. It's strong. I'm going to say it again, because I like it. We need to talk, bro. Yeah, let's talk. <laughs> um, uh, I'll text you. I'll text you right after this, John. It is rich. It is very rich. I don't know why they just took it down on me because I clicked it. I'm going to read it again now. Some men give up their designs when they have almost reached the goal, while others, on the contrary, Obtain a victory by exerting, at the last moment, more vigorous efforts than ever before. It hit just as hard the second time, yeah? Um, reminds me of that, of a Don Kennedy quote. Is it Don Kennedy or John Kennedy? A lot of niggas scared of success and won't chase it. Them be the same motherfuckers that won't make it. Word. Don Kennedy. Herodotus. Well, as uh, as per usual, we up against it. Um, I don't know when the next time I'm gonna be on is, but I appreciate y'all kicking it as per usual. Shout out to all of y'all for continuing to come through, show love, and grow with the boy. Um, if y'all ain't following, follow your boy. If y'all ain't on my Discord, hop on my Discord. Um, these videos get reposted to YouTube. You can go and uh, check those out. YouTube, a fancy clown. Um, podcast, T R N, the T R N podcast. Check it out on all your podcast places where you stream your podcasts. Um, it's the best podcast that ever podcasted in the world of podcasting. Uh, so. 
I think that might be it. I guess we just be out with a song. Um, what? Nah, podcast coming, baby. Podcast, podcast always going hard. Let's bounce with a song, man. I want to make it a good song, too. Can't leave on no BS. I think I'm going to do Bam. Bam. Why you was shook, bro? Why you say how you shook? Champions. Bam. It's my spot right here. Bam, just crossed off for another gold butter. Look like your boy on the road, big steps, quit. Never your homie on a stroll town near you. Might see my post on a pole. Bam, just crossed off for another gold butter. Look like your boy on the road, big steps, quit. Never your homie on a stroll town near you. Might see my post on a pole. Bam, heard him on the snap like bamboo super. I'm telling you ain't nothing that I can't do. Too hot, boy, can't touch my handle. If you ever met me, you would wanna be my man too. Don't tweak, just a sample. Alleyway surrounded, we fire. Like Rambo, don't need haters. Example, can't deal with what's real. Hit cancel, bam. Just got all up in your zone slam. Now, old boy, wanna shake my hand. Hand his boy's phone, tell him over my cam. And he tryna link, cause I just went ham. I don't even eat me, so I had to yam. Tryna come hard, but the sucker should have ran. Finna go home, tell his people who I am. I'm just used to it, cause it's all I got planned. Just crossed off for another go butter. Look like your boy, it's all I got, got planned. Steps quit, never your homie on a stroll town. You might see my post on a got pan. Just crossed off for another go butter. Look like your boy on a road, big steps quit. Never your homie on a stroll town near. You might see my post on a pole pan. Banging these nails on the floor, banging these nails on the wall, banging these nails on the roof. And the foundation is laid on the truth. Bang, bang, bang. Not just because, not just a house, but there's a cause. Raising babies up into adults. I build a home. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, but that do. I'm Flintstone like Bonnie Rebel with his Betty and his Bam Bam and his brother Pow Pow Boom Boom Bang Bang. Raise them all up to be mature. Bang 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 Bang. Yeah, I got plan plan plans to make a team out my fan fan fan. Reap what you sow, so we watch what we plan plan plans. Invest in it, so don't need no bang bang bang. Thanks, but no thank thank thank. Bam, just crossed off for another gold butter. Look like your boy on the road, big steps quit. Never your homie on a stroll town near. You might see my post on a pole. Bam, just crossed.